This is Ryan with LongRangeOnly.com and in this video we are going to show you how to take the parts that we showed you in the first rifle build video and turn them into something like this. longrangeonly.com and this is going to be the follow-up video to the introductory video that we had on how to build your own custom rifle and as you heard in the opening sequence of this video we're going to show you how to take these parts and the the parts that you saw in the first video and turn them into something like this right here now I was going to show you how to put this one together uh, but I ran out of time to get it on video and I needed it for a, a hunt that we just got back from. So it, it's all the same, but we're going to set this rifle aside real quick and then we're going to take a look at the parts we've got out here and we're going to show you how to put them together. All right, so like we talked about in the introductory video, we're just going to rehash the, the pieces that you need. So you're going to need a barrel, you're going to need an action, you're going to need a trigger, and I've already got this one installed. We'll actually show you how to install a trigger in a separate video. It's super easy. Uh, you're going to need a stock. You're going to need some bottom metal, a spring, a follower, and the magazine box, and then of course the action screws. I guess it helped if I got the right one. So action screws here, and uh, we're kind of bounce around here in this video, but I'm going to cut real quick to the video uh, segment that shows you how to install a barrel. Uh, this is probably the most intimidating part of putting a, a rifle together by yourself, but it really is very simple. So we'll cut to that video real quick. All right, in this little segment right here, I'm going to show you, I think, the most intimidating part of assembling your own rifle. And in this one we're going to do with a shouldered uh, pre-fit barrel. In a later video, I'll show you how to do a... Uh, barrel with a barrel nut set up and it's not a lot more complicated but it does take a little uh, little different uh, a setup process to use the barrel nut you actually have to set headspace yourself this one has had the heads base set by the gunsmith like I said it is a prefit for uh, this defiance anti-x and uh, I will zoom the camera in right in here where where most of the the important part of this is going to going to happen but basically we're gonna uh, screw screw the action onto the barrel okay until it stops and then we're gonna put it in this clamp and we're gonna finish torquing it down now there are several different uh, barrel vices out there this is definitely not one of the better ones uh, the some of the newer ones with the bushings in them that have the swing arm over and it's got the one uh, bolt and nut that clamps it down would be a, a lot better and uh, but this will get this will get the job done and I've I've tried several different uh, ways to keep the barrel from getting marred like I said the ones with the little aluminum inserts that are actually sized to fit the barrel contour, the barrel shank contour, are probably going to be better options. But I've had very good luck with paper, and I've not marred any barrels uh, since I've used this method. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in real quick, and then uh, we'll show you how we're going to finish this off. All right, so here I'm going to wrap my barrel shank in paper. I'm going to slide it in here. Get it, get it close to the receiver, but not so close that when you uh, start spinning it, it's gonna actually, uh, the action will hit the barrel vise and it'll mar it that way. So just get it close to, to help with the torque, but not so close that you mess up your action, okay? So now we'll go ahead and uh, 
clamp this down and you're going to want it as tight as you can get it otherwise it will slip and the barrel vices I'm talking about with the with the single hint the hinge and the single bolt and the aluminum inserts they don't require as much clamping force on the barrel vise as ones like this that aren't really uh, fit exactly to the contour of the barrel shank. So we're going to start there and I'm going to grab my barrel vise. There's several out there. I've got several here. Uh, one for a three lug terminus. I've got a big horn with the extractor cut out. This one was one for a, a Pierce Engineering. It's a little bit larger. And then we've got a universal one which we'll talk about in a different video. But right now we're going to use this one right here. We're slide it in the back of the receiver and get the appropriate sized socket. And there seems to be a lot of discrepancy on what certain people think you should torque it to. I think anywhere from 80 inch pounds or sorry 80 foot pounds to 100 foot pounds should be plenty. Uh, there's not really going to be any force trying to remove the uh, action from the barrel so I've never had one come loose. But Alright so if you go to torque this and the, the barrel starts to slip in the vise then you'll have to torque this down a little bit more. But I've got it torqued down and we've got the receiver torqued to the barrel. Uh, now realistically you should check headspace even on a shoulder prefit with headspace gauges but this one's been done by the gunsmith I trust him and like I said it's a guaranteed headspace action so I'm not worried about it so that's this portion we'll go ahead and show you how to assemble the rest of the rifle okay now we've showed you how to do what I would consider the most scary part of putting together a rifle and what I think most people are going to be uh, thinking the hardest part of putting together a rifle is uh, let's go ahead and put this back together. Like I said, we've got the trigger installed in this one and uh, we'll show you in a separate video how to install a trigger. I think most of you probably know how and a lot of you probably already swapped them out, but it is uh, very simple. And like I said, we'll, we'll do a real quick video on one a trigger installation later. So the easiest way I've found to do this is take your magazine box. It should have a little cutout at the front where the bullet's gonna ride into the, the feed ramp get that set in there and then we're going to take the stock and we're going to set it down over get it fitted on there and then for the magazine you'll just take your uh, spring the follower spring and you'll slide it into the follower it's it's very obvious uh, and then you'll f uh, slide that spring into the the floor plate and so here we've got uh, a Hawkins uh, M5 BDL style and we chose this for this just to show you that this is available a lot of guys uh, you know maybe order an M5 they decide they don't like the detachable box setup but they've got a stock you know a six to eight hundred dollar stock set up for uh, a detachable box and they decide they want to do uh, BDL style floor plate and Hawkins Precision makes something that has that covered so we've got that here it doesn't really matter as long as it's you've got the right thing for it it's all going to be the same as far as installing and so we'll set that down on here okay one thing I do want to know if you're putting together a rifle you want this magazine box to be sloppy in there a little bit. You do not want the bottom metal pinching that magazine box between itself and the action. It can cause accuracy issues. So I'll put the shorter screw in the front and put the longer screw in the back. Okay, and we'll grab the appropriate uh, bit here. And most Remington 700s and clones are going to be torqued to 65 inch pounds and that's what we're going to torque this to 
and get these somewhat tightened down there and then we'll get this floor plate. All right, so now that you've got these somewhat tight but still loose, I like to go ahead and tap the rifle on the butt stock to get it seated against the recoil lug. And if you've bedded it correctly or the correct way, in my opinion, there'll be no slop in that recoil lug, but it's still a good idea to go ahead and tap it to make sure it's seated where we want it. Okay, and we got those torqued down to 65 uh, inch pounds and it really is that seat that simple we've got a we've got a rifle here ready to shoot you can make a couple dummy rounds if it's the first just to make sure the cycling's all correct and it's going to feed correctly and we'll just go ahead and real quickly mount a scope on this thing i've already got it this scope's been on a lot of different rifles so it's already leveled and all that good stuff if we get enough request we can show you uh, how we recommend mounting your rifle scope from scratch. Okay, so you're gonna push this forward because as the rifle recoils, it's gonna wanna uh, pull the, the scope forward. So you wanna keep it against the lugs. Okay. Okay. And Make sure you follow the ring manufacturer specs. We're gonna to torque this down to 55 inch pounds. Okay. Now we've got, uh, we showed you how to put the barrel on, how to thread it on and how to torque it down very simple pro uh, process. And I do think that's probably the most intimidating piece for most people. Uh, we showed you how to put the bottom metal on. We showed you the, the pieces. I uh, didn't do any close-ups, but I think it's pretty obvious once you get the parts, how you see the spring goes into the, the plate and how it goes onto the follower. And I think you'll see how the follower gets oriented in there. Um, we showed you the trigger on here, we did not show you how to install one, but it is really just take a pin, uh, punch and two pins and uh, knock those in place. Uh, like I said, we will do a separate uh, video uh, on how to do that in the future. And then we just quickly mounted a scope on here. So we took this rifle from all the separate pieces and then we put it together for you. And like I showed you in the introduction, uh, that's what the end product will look like. Obviously, you've all seen rifles. You've got this rifle in front of you. And this is the finished product. So we will have a link in the description to a thread on the forum that we've already started after the first video in this rifle build series. You can head over there. You can ask me any questions about how to put this together. If I uh, get too many follow-up or enough follow-up questions, we will go ahead and... Uh, do a follow-up video addressing the questions that we are getting. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and turn on notifications so you can be notified of any future videos. The next video in this series, I'm going to start breaking down why you would choose one stock over another, why you would choose one action over another, and why you might choose one barrel over another. We've done a lot of uh, stock reviews. We've done a couple action reviews and there will probably be more down the road. And we've done some barrel discussions on the forum, but uh, we will actually show you why you would choose a stock over another stock, why you would choose one action over another, and why you would choose one barrel over another as we progress. And then we'll later down the road, we'll talk about uh, bottom metals and maybe do a trigger install video and kind of help you make those decisions. Like I said, we've done reviews on these products, but we don't typically do a side-by-side -side comparison and uh, do a compare contrast pros, cons of various pieces. So like I said, if you go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel and turn on notifications, you'll be able to see when we have uh, future videos in this series out there, as well as other videos that may be of interest to you. We appreciate you taking the time to watch. Have a great day.